I think interviewing a cartoonist is a bit of a hazardous behavior. And today we have with us on literary. Hazardous? Law, Why hazardous? First time I'm hearing the word. We have with us Alexi, Alex, Alex Rafael Fernandez, who's been my colleague for many years. So before he interrupts me a bit more, let me introduce Alexi to you. And let me put the ball in his court and ask him to tell how and why he got this name Alexi, which is very ungoan, almost Russian. No, no, it's the beginning and the end, A to Z. A to Z. After college, I did a course in advertising and public relations. Uh, I specialized in copywriting. And during my stint with mass communication and marketing, there was a movie called Zorba the Greek. In that movie, Zorba's name was Alex C. It was a Greek movie. And his character was somewhat like me. So in the office, they used to call me Alex, Alex C. Then when I shifted to cartooning, I said, I'll take that name and put a YZ to it. I see. So I baptized myself, Alex's. For those of us who don't know Alex's, and that will be a very few of us, I guess, because uh, Alexi has been a cartoonist in Goa for a long, long time, right from 1983-84. Four decades, yeah. Four decades. He is known for his cartoons in many of the local papers. All the local all, papers. All. All. You've done a full circuit. I've done the full circle. Great. Uh, I've worked with you in the 80s when uh, at that time the Konkani movement was going strong. Yes. And uh, you felt very strongly about it. And the paper you were with in those days, Herald, also highlighted a lot of your work. I remember eight column cartoons and all that. But of course, full today, page too. Full page. Yeah. Full page. Uh, those were fun days. And of course, there are many Alexi stories that uh, we guys who work along with you can narrate to the audiences. But that will take a year of Sundays to tell. So we won't get into that. Today, we are here to talk about your books. And I was very surprised when you told me the other day that uh, you have put together seven books so far. Seven or eight. Seven, I think. All in one form or the other dealing with cartooning. Many of them on Goa. All of them on Goa except the sports sportoons, cartoons. Sportoons. So sportoons. actually sportoons and how's that? These are your cricket cartoons, correct? Yeah, this is only sports and this was published during the Asian Games in 1982, even before I started cartooning. Okay. okay. Yeah, it was published by this big uh, publishing company, India Book House. It's a big, yeah, it's a big uh, brand. Yeah, so those in days this Asian Games were supposed to be held. And I said, why not do sports cartoons? And I went I with my cartoons, 103 cartoons, I think, or 105. I went to India Book House. And they said, you should have come earlier. I anyway, see. it was not too late. And then they published my book. These were your first books? These were my first books. And you know what was the price then what? of the book? Yeah. 7 rupees 50 paise. I see. <laughs> Those days, very little publishing was happening. Yeah. Uh, it was very difficult to get published. And Bombay was a publishing hub of India before exactly. Delhi took over. I mean, like, it's it's a pan-India book. And uh, one is on sports in general. And one is on cricket in particular. And cricket was published, this book called How's That? Was published in 1987 during yeah. the Reliance World Cup. I see. Yeah, that time Reliance had hosted the World Cup. And again, it was published by... Marine Sports. Marine Sports. Yeah, Who, publishing uh, company by Goan actually. Goan yeah. based in Dadar, no? And based in Dadar. Next yeah. to the Portuguese church, Marine yes, Sports. Yes, yes, yes. Theo Braganza. Braganza. Yeah. So that is one section of your And work. also let me tell you, both these books, they still are the first of its kind in India. I see. Nobody has published any sports book on sports cartoon. Wow. And nobody, till today? Till today. I think so. Okay. I've never seen any. Quite a niche, and it no? is Quite a niche where, where, yeah. where you take your love for sports and... Uh, yeah, because you, earlier in school, I was a very good athlete. I see. Very good athlete, a very good football player. I almost played for Bombay. Really? I was selected for the trials and then I was carried out of the ground because I was kicked on my knee. I see. And then I said I was suffering from pneumonia ever since. <laughs> pneumonia. Pneumonia. <laughs> But that was the end of my football career. I see. If I wanted to be something, it was a footballer. I see. I see. Yeah, so, I so you combine your love for sports with your love for cartooning. And yeah. uh, this came later on because... 80s. After St. Xavier's College in Bombay. That yeah. was the turning point of my life, actually. Why? Career, whatever, you know. I was uh, very much influenced by what I experienced in St. Xavier's College. All the social work camps. 
the ICAF camps. I did 17 camps wow. during my college days. Really? Yeah, yeah. But those years were very critical for India in the 60s because there was famine, drought and a whole lot of problems. And I think exactly. that colleges like St. Xavier's Bombay were ahead of the rest in terms of conscientizing students and… Uh, exactly. No? I worked in uh, earthquake areas, I worked in drought areas. I see. I went through all sorts So, it of, shaped your life? So, it really shaped my life. I felt oh, what's happening. And then we had these other camps which were called… Uh, they were called leadership camps, I, I think. I see. Social Where Service League? No. No. Social Service League. So, I did both these camps side by side. Okay. And uh, there we were very idealistic those days. We said, okay, we have to change India from what is happening. We can still whatever. afford to be idealistic. We no? can still afford. I still am in a little way. Yeah, I yeah. am. So of course, I know your story, so maybe I can jump ahead uh, of the listener and also say that you came with a lot of uh, other Goan youth returned to Goa in the 70s itself. Exactly. Moving out of the rat race, which was Bombay in those right, days, yeah. already getting to be, and coming here experimenting with schools and uh, alternative schools, alternative learning. You were an art teacher in this school. I that, was an uh, art teacher in my Kalangut. school, though I had no art uh, training. Okay. And I remember my first day in the school, my student won a national scholarship. After that, nobody told me what to do. I really? could do whatever I wanted. Really? Really. So, it was just your passion and your love for art that… Uh, yeah, exactly. That took you forward? Yes. So, you are suggesting that uh, youngsters should also go into fields that they really enjoy, that they feel yeah, passionate about. Yeah, that is life, no? If you want to enjoy life, you do what you like doing best. So, that was your 70s and of course, incidentally, in this group that came back also were uh, Dr. Claude Alvarez, uh, his wife Norma Alvarez and uh, Valentino Fernandez. Uh, yeah, we were all part of the gang Josh Peter. in St. Xavier's College and then Norma Sophia's. of course was in Sophia's. We had a lot of girlfriends in Sophia's via the camps that we used okay. to go. We were all committed young students yeah. wanting to do something. Yeah. So, that is how we became very good friends. Okay. We used to go here, there, everywhere together. And, and then, then we decided to come to Goa together. And set up these experimental schools in Kalangu. Yes, we thought we would start a commune actually. I know? See. Yeah, but I see. that experiment didn't work out. Those days were very idealistic very in the sense of Woodstock yeah, and whatever yeah. it is. So when you're Amazing. young, you're dreaming, but still. Yeah, one is still dreaming. Yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. But uh, maybe with our feet on the ground now. So yes, <laughs> yes, to. yes. So then from the 70s, we jumped to the 80s where I encountered you as a young journalist then and you as a young cartoonist uh, making your break in the Herald. Very much. In the Herald. That was 83. Herald was great. Those were my glory days actually because uh, thanks to Rajan Narayan, of course, they all appreciated my work and yeah. most so the editor and he used to give me a lot of space. Yeah. A space that I don't think I'll ever get again. I think they understood the fact that, uh, you know, pol uh, newspapers need not be all about politics, dry news, grey columns, yeah. you know, headlines. There's also space for fun, humour, criticism, you know, echoing the people's sentiment. So, you were doing it in a very big way in that sense and they yeah. give you the space for it. Yeah, there were serious cartoons also because I was pulled up by the Goa Assembly two, three times. Yeah. Were, yeah. Two, three times? Yeah. You had to issue any apologies or… or but we never did that, okay. you know. We, we defied the assembly this. In fact, I remember putting myself and Rajan Narayan in jail uh -huh. in a cartoon. Uh -huh. in, in a, a cartoon. cartoon. In a car we behind bars. I remember that. Behind yeah. bars. Yeah. But we defied assembly to do that, you know. Okay. It never happened. Okay. And I remember those days I even quoted arrest because I was very much part of the movement going Konkani. for Murchars and… Konkani movement. Konkani movement. And okay. I remember people holding my… My cartoons and big banners, they used to I blow see. them up and walk. Ah, walk with them like play cards. Yeah, with play cards. I didn't know how important a role I played till I, I went to France. Okay. And I stayed with a Goan family and that Goan, Mr. Lawrence, I think, Lorenzo, he told me, my nephew knows you. I see. When the nephew came home, I said, I don't know you. Yeah. But he said, Alex, we knew you because we used to wait for your cartoons yes. every day yes. and that is how we knew you by your work. He took leave the next day and, yes. and he took me sightseeing all over Paris. The media has its own power and you yeah, never know yeah. who's watching, who's reading, who's amazing, you know. Amazing, amazing. So that, so that was the time I felt, you know, my cartoons, doing those cartoons, though we were 
paid peanuts actually. Yeah, small amounts. Hardly any. But still, I think uh, you know, yeah, money is not everything. Money was not everything. And sometimes when you do it with passion, it's even more satisfying yeah, than money you know. Money was never, never. And you got the freedom also, which also that most was the of, main mostly, thing. Most of the time, I don't think I ninety percent of the time that much freedom, no. Yeah. To yeah. say what you want. I remember uh, the boys in the office used to wait for my cartoon. It doesn't happen now. Yeah. For one reason or the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That time there was, uh, you know, that uh, fire in the belly and yeah. you needed to make a point. So, of course, the next coming link to that is the fact that a lot of your work is dealing with the environment in that sense. Another issue yeah. you feel strongly about. I remember uh, Rajan Naraj used to call me cartoon terrorist <laughs> in his editorials. Okay. Very often, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Of course, the environment is a issue you feel strongly about, would you say? Very much, because most of my cartoons are regarding. And this full book is regarding the environment. This was actually, this book was published by Father Albert Lewis, who is no more now. God bless his soul. And actually, these are all very strangely done uh, by Xerox and then put together. Ah. Yeah, yeah, but he was very keen that I do something. Yeah. And, uh, well, this was one of my first books so on that's, uh, environment. That's during the time when uh, the state was increasingly <coughs> concerned about our environment, rightly so, and even now the even concern now, is there. It's even worse now. But uh, yeah, it's worse now. But probably then uh, people were just waking up to the normality fight. of the change, yeah, 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 yeah. to the fact that it was changing so fast. So we were even getting more shocked. And of course, these two books are about you know Goa that is changing and that uh, you know. This book I felt is one of my best books because uh, it's called Goa Goan, Going and Gone. With a question mark, with a okay. hope that Goa will never go away. And this book I did in verse actually. I see. The whole book is in verse. I uh, see. So there's a poet also hiding in you? Yes. Well, I wouldn't call myself really a poet, but I like to write verse. I see. One verse than the other. So these are all in verse. And in fact, the book is sold out. And I want to do a second edition because I, I felt this, I said everything I feel about Goa in this book. And this is... Uh, this book uh, are my cartoons that appeared in the, in the Times of India recently. Okay, okay. So they are all coloured cartoons. Uh, they look very nice and okay. they are also very strong cartoons because the editor who was there then, Srinivas, uh, he gave me a lot of scope I to... See. To express yourself. Yeah, to express myself. That was great. And of course, uh, this is... See, cartooning never paid, you know. Yeah. That's why I used to jump from one one paper to another paper just for rupees 500 more. Yeah. Yeah, and then I was very feeling low at one time and then suddenly I got this call from Fundusa Orion telling okay. me that you are invited to Portugal. I see. And uh, I was called to Portugal yeah. for one international cartoon exhibition. I see. And they told me send me 100 of your cartoons. I see. And then they did this book. I see. Yeah, this book was, it's a booklet actually, not I really see. a book. I see. So most of my cartoons are there in that. I see. In so Lisbon, in happy. Lisbon. In Lisbon. Of out, out of Lisbon in Oiris. I see. Yeah. Yes. Of course, cartooning is one of those fields where, like photography, which is not appreciated, it's worth, true worth is not appreciated. Yeah, if not they have really. a cartoonist, they'll use a cartoonist, but they don't see it as an essential yeah. part of the paper, someone who has to Sometimes just to fill up space or whatever. Yeah. That of is the sad part of of course, in Bombay, they have a slightly different tradition where you have people like R.K. Lakshman and uh, Mario Miranda and all who were a critical part of, you know, Subnis and they were in there. Those but days. Yeah, those days. But then the tradition keeps... I used to go to Bombay very often. Yeah. And I did cartoons for almost most of the papers. I see. From Indian Express, I did a lot of cartoons. Midday, I did a lot of sports cartoons. Sports cartoons? Yeah, Asian Age. I see. And Sunday... Observer, Illustrated Weekly, when Kushwan Singh was there. It was a grand uh, magazine yeah, in those yeah, days. Those no? days, yeah, yeah. I did a lot of cartoons when Kushwan was around. Also. I see. I see. Initially, I wanted to go back to Bombay. I see. Because I saw no scope in cartooning in Goa, actually. True. Goa, but you have a limited choice, whereas limited in Bombay, choice, it's a it, yeah, 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 it was the media capital, and yeah. you know. So, anyway, I couldn't go for one reason or the other, but no regrets, absolutely yeah. no regrets. Yeah. I think I did fairly good by staying back in Goa. You have travelled quite a few places, no? Portugal to exhibit. Any other places for... Yeah, then uh, I remember going to... I had this big exhibition in the House of Commons. I see. You know, every time Keith was the Goan MP... Yeah. He used to come to Goa yeah. and he used to have press conferences. I used to go for the press conference. 
do a caricature of him at I the see. end of the press conference, give it to him. I see. And he was quite impressed actually. And yeah. he, after a few, I think it happened after two, three times, he said, Alexis, you must come to England. I see. And he had this exhibition in the House of Commons. Wow. Mother Parliament. Yeah, the mother of all parliaments. And that was a big thing, you know, because for the first time also, when I was having the exhibition, Keith said, invite all your Goan friends. I see. So Goans who never got to step into I parliament, see. got to come to parliament house, see my exhibition. And I, I remember parliament was going on. Keith specially took me I into see. parliament house. And wow, I was part of, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. And then he was quite impressed. There were a few MPs who came for the exhibition also. And then there is a meet of African and Asian entrepreneurs. He said, you must do some cartoons on some special I people there. I see. And there was an exhibition in London, Marriott, I remember. I see. And I presented my caricatures to two or three British uh, MPs. And one guy was so impressed. He said, really, this is for me. I said, it is for you. <laughs> So, is it your point that uh, cartooning as a field is appreciated more outside? I was invited to to Kuwait, yeah. to Dubai, then to to Canada, to America, New Zealand, to I Australia. See. So, all this was because people outside Goa appreciated me, yeah. me more than the people in Goa. Right. So, that was the bonus actually, though I felt I was not paid yeah. enough. Yeah. But that was the big bonus that I I got invited to, to these places here by by Goans, you know, who I really see. appreciated my work. Expat Goans. Expat, yeah. And I remember I spent forty seven days in uh, America and I Canada. I see. Yeah. So somebody wow. was saying even the Salgaunkas were not able to <laughs> spend forty seven days in and without spending a single pie. You know, I had these friends all over. I remember going to England. There were four people who came to receive me. I see. And they took me to uh, another Goan's house, Eddie, Eddie Fernandez, yeah, Goan yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know him. I see. And I stayed with him for one week. I see. For more than a week. And then one distant uh, Gaon Bao of mine, uh, he said, come on, now enough of staying with Eddie. You come and stay with I see. me. I see. And after the exhibition, I was getting invited all over the I place. See. I see. I could have stayed for six months also, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But I managed, Keith had told me only three days. He said, I'll put you up in a hotel. I see. And then after three days, you pack your bags and go back to Goa. Yeah. So I stayed for one month. I see. Yeah. I see, I see, I see. And I could have stayed even for a longer time. And during those days, they would tell me, why don't you settle down in England itself? <laughs> I said, no, I'm happy in my Goa. That is true. So that was a fact. But uh, what, so Alexi, what's the incident that pushed you into cartooning, into drawing? You liked it as a kid or? No, no. As I told you, St. Xavier's College, yeah. Bombay was a turning point. And at that time, I was fairly good with words and drawings. So I took advice from my friends and they said, well, you go into advertising, that's a new field. I see. A very popular field. Uh, a lot of goans in the field that time, A no? lot of goans also. And then I did a course in advertising and public relations. I see. So I got a job before I could finish my course. I see. But I lasted only one year in, in advertising okay. because I felt it was a big con game. You got to tell 100 lies to sell a product. Yeah. And I said, I can't it's do It's not this. enjoyable at all. It's, it's like not. There the is money's a lot of money, glamour, yeah. whatever you met. But so you're not far. doing what you feel. And yeah, I said, this is not, I'm not going to do this all my life. And that is when we all decided we'll go to Goa. Move I down. tried my hand at cartooning then. I see. I met Mario Miranda and Mario Miranda put me on to Khalil of Midday. Khalil Ansari. I did a called comic strip. I see. It appeared in Sports Week, but they were paying hardly anything. Yet. I see. For several other magazines. But it was not paying much. So then we decided to come to Goa. And now. become a drawing teacher. Not become a drawing teacher. I said, I was at a loose end okay. and I was fairly good at drawing. We started that school, there was yeah. this big uh, strike against Father Salas. Yeah. And uh, they opened the school. I, Happy and I was still moving around. Happy learners, which subsequently no, became... No, no, no. No. 
At that time, I, Peter and I came to Goa together and Peter got uh, involved in the school. Okay. And I moved ahead and I went to, to Mangalore. I see. And I was working at a farm with another Zebrite. I see. Yeah, for some time. And then I came back. And then Peter said, we have started this school, why don't you come? But there was no vacancy actually. But he said, there's a vacancy for a peon. But we'll give you other jobs, I whatever. See. I see. So I joined the school as a peon. Oh, gosh. And then there was this vacancy for a drawing teacher. Although you weren't a graduate in that sense. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as I told, we had big plans. Yeah. So being a peon was not important. Yeah. We, we had other plans. So then I, I joined as a drawing teacher, as I told you. I see. Then happy learners came subsequently. Life is what's happening when you're making other plans. But yeah. then it all works out for the yeah, best. And sometimes you out. find a bonus which you don't expect at all. Exactly. Uh, I remember some of the humor that uh, you used to indulge in when you were a cartoonist and very popular with all the other staff because of your unpredictable and, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you want to give the audience a taste of that? No, no, no. Nothing no. like that. But now I've, I'm on this trip of laughter, you know. I, I feel laughter really is, is good medicine. It's therapeutic. And if I, if I have an audience in front of me, I said, come on, let's laugh, you know. I remember your laughing sessions and once you got them laughing, then they got so much into it that they could not control themselves, right? Yes. <laughs> so, so in that sense, this last book here of yours talks about uh, theatrist. And uh, there are illustrations of many of the Goan theatrists. See, this book is an interesting book because I felt theatrists were one type of people that really kept Goa's identity going, mm. especially in Bombay. Mm. And uh, that time, Goa, Bombay was the hub of the art, yeah. not, not Goa. True. And these are the people that uh, really took uh, Konkani to another level because, as, as you know, the theatre is always in Konkani. Yeah. So I felt when this 125 years was of, of the Konkani theatre was announced, I said I would do my little bit and give them little prominence via caricatures. So I met the Theatre Academy and they said, great idea, go ahead. I see. And they gave me full scope to References do. and photographs yeah, of them. Yeah, they gave me references. I did a lot of research myself. I see. Meeting people, talking to people, even which the Theatre Academy didn't know. I see. I put in all this. So it's a very interesting book. I was not aware of it till I saw it last month. Now? Yeah. Last month, okay. A bit late. I did another thing with this book. Uh, with the with the caricatures, I did 103 caricatures. I see. Yeah, these are all people, theatrists who had died in the past. They are none of the local. I see. Yeah, yeah. And I felt that was my memory alive in in the form of documentation. And another thing I did was I've donated all these caricatures to the central library. I see. So people anytime they want, they can an exhibition of them, they can I see. borrow it from the central library, whatever they want. Very interesting. Yeah, so that was one thing I did because many people wanted to buy them, relatives of the yeah. theatres. I said if I buy, if I sell, they'll break the collection will get yeah. spoiled, yeah. So I, I met the curator, Dr. Luis Fernandez, and he was very happy. I see. And I said, yeah, there is a place uh, for my cartoon. So he will be putting up some. Interesting. And then I think now in a, within a month, I think they'll have a public function of, of my gifting the carry cases to yeah. Very yeah. nice. So Very nice. I was happy with what I so did. So these are the areas of your work, basically sports, environment, Goa, caricatures. You caricatures. do a lot of caricatures. I love doing caricatures and I keep doing them all the time. Actually, my next book of caricatures will be on Goan musicians. I see. Because they are not documented. So that will be take some time because I have to meet a lot of people. One last question. Would yes. you recommend any youngsters to enter the field of cartooning? Well, well. <laughs> Is it, it's if a tough you, field. It's a tough field. Yeah, yeah, but then you have to have some kind of social awareness. You just yeah. can't enter the field of cartooning. It's not for everybody. Yeah. You have to be socially committed to what is happening around. Then only you can be a successful cartoonist. And not everybody can be a cartoonist. I joined cartooning because with the background I had of St. Xavier's College, going for all the social work camps yeah. and experiencing India, the people, you know, what they were going through, the anguish, the sorrow, the pain, 
in the drought affected areas and why was that happening because our politicians never bothered about them they only interested in the urban areas even now what is happening True. with these farmers committing suicide yeah. and all it's still happening yeah, yeah. and that is the sad part so unless you experience something of of what is happening around you and you feel committed that you want to say something about right. it then only you can be a cartoon of course you can enter other areas like sports and science even cartoon can be done uh, there in different areas not necessarily political yeah. socio political cartoon there is scope and now there is scope if you are a good cartoonist you can do animations get into other aspects of of cartooning a lot of scope now but for socio political cartoon you have to be committed no it's not for everybody true thank you so much alex yeah, here's yeah. wishing you all the best and looking forward to many more of your books and work anyway thank you very much and it was lovely speaking i enjoyed myself and i hope i carry a little bit of my message to all of you be a cartoonist be a committed cartoonist thank you